Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. 10 ways to say hello. Let's get started. Boker tov. Good morning. Boker tov. Good morning. Some people, if they're having like kind of a bad morning and they don't want to say good morning or boker tov, they would just say like boker morning, obviously. <laughs> Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Hello. Shalom also means peace in Hebrew. So it's almost kind of Rastafarian, you know, peace. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. I guess in Hebrew it's not quite as natural to say as it is in English. Um, so if you really want to be super casual, um, you can also say something like, um, why? Shanim. It's like, it's like saying, whoa, ages, without even saying, it has been, just ages. How have you been? How have you been? This is more of a way to ask somebody like that you really haven't seen for a while, like, what has he been up to? And you say it, which is a very casual way of saying it. It's very useful. Mashlomcha, how are you? Mashlomcha, how are you? Shlomcha also comes from the word shalom. So literally, it's kind of like asking, how is your peace? Ech hayom shalcha, how is your day? Ech hayom shalcha, how is your day? Um, that's a nice thing to text somebody like your boyfriend or girlfriend in the middle of the day, um, just to see how they're doing. Ma kore? What's up? Ma kore? What's up? There are so many ways of saying it in Hebrew. Um, the most common ones is, are this, this one, ma kore, which is more like what's happening, and also ma nishma, which is like, what's up? Erev tov. Good evening. Erev tov. Good evening. So, like English, I think Erev tov is not something that you would use, like, with your friends or in any casual situation. It's more like when you're going to a restaurant or some sort of a service giver would say that, not like with friends. Na'im le'akirotcha. It's nice to meet you. Na'im le'akirotcha. Nice to meet you. Um, as a matter of fact, a more common way of saying it is to just drop the last part, dropping the otach or otcha, and simply say, na'im l'hakir. It's like saying uh, in English, it's a pleasure. Ech hakol, how's everything? Ech hakol, how's everything? Uh, also very like friendly way of asking like how's life um, and if you want to ask how's life you can ask in this series you'll master hebrew pronunciation proper pronunciation is essential in hebrew and in this series you'll learn it in a fast comprehensive and easy way in this first lesson you'll learn about the building blocks of the hebrew pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons the hebrew alphabet consists of 22 letters all of which are consonants a few of these consonants, however, can act like vowels. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Hebrew, and here they are. There are 19 consonant sounds and five vowel sounds. Each symbol that you see here represents a single sound determined by the IPA, which is a standardized way to represent sounds without the baggage that often comes with traditional letters. By using all of these sounds, you can form every single word in Hebrew. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 19 consonant sounds in Hebrew, you already know 16 of the original sounds. 
That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore all of the vowel sounds for the same reason. The only thing standing between you and perfect Hebrew pronunciation is three new consonant sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Yara, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Shalom, ani Yara. Yara will be giving you native pronunciation examples to imitate, but for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Hebrew. Ra, seva, ochel. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Hebrew learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Hebrew. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Hebrew sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood, and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Hebrew. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Hebrew tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. You will recognize the schwa vowel by the two vertical dots underneath the consonant. In Hebrew, many words contain a schwa vowel. There are three different kinds of schwa vowels. The first kind is a short E-like sound. Le. The second is a full stop on the consonant it's underneath. Lehitlabesh. And the third is a move to the next consonant without a vowel. Ptucha. The resulting combination of consonants often feels unnatural to learners of Hebrew. Kvisa. Instead of properly combining these letters, new speakers often put a short vowel between the two. In order to correct this problem, Hebrew students should practice these special letter combinations. Listen to the examples. Gdola. Ktana. Zman. Number two, the Hebrew letter resh. This is a problematic letter for learners of Hebrew, particularly for English speakers, because this R sound does not exist in English. The Hebrew R sound is similar to the German or French R. Unlike the English R, which is pronounced with the tip of the tongue at the front of the mouth, the Hebrew R is pronounced using the back of the tongue with a slight roll. You can think of it like gargling air at the back of your throat. Listen to the following examples. Kar, Rishon, Horim. We'll teach you how to pronounce this sound in lesson six. Number three, misplacing stress. A common mistake for new speakers of Hebrew is the misplacement of stress. In the beginning, most foreign speakers model their stress patterns after their native language. Correcting this is very easy because most Hebrew words are stressed on the last syllable. Pay attention to the stress pattern in the following Hebrew words. Bgadim, yalda, lilmod. When words aren't stressed on the last syllable, they are part of a very specific group of words, all containing a similar stress pattern. Medaberet, sefer, tapuach. We'll teach you how to speak Hebrew with a correct stress in lesson eight. Number four, foreign words in Hebrew. When you see a word you recognize from your own language in Hebrew, your first instinct is to pronounce it like it is in your own language. However, many foreign words in Hebrew have been modified to have different stress patterns. They may even use different sounds altogether. Pay attention to how native speakers pronounce these words, and you'll learn them quickly. Listen to Yara. Universita. Televisia. Sandwich. Number five. While this letter is usually difficult for foreign speakers to pronounce correctly in the beginning, it is also one that many people perfect with a good amount of practice. This is a guttural H pronounced at the back of the throat. It has a bad reputation because it sounds as though you're bringing up phlegm from your throat. It's possible that non-native speakers are afraid to make this sound 
and this is why it has become known as a difficult Hebrew letter to pronounce. There's no need to be afraid of this letter, because this sound is part of what gives Hebrew its uniqueness. Listen and repeat alongside Yada. Cheder Chavera Bachar Noach Practice often, and you'll be sure to master this elusive sound in no time. Now you know the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. In this lesson, you'll learn all five Hebrew vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Hebrew. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel sound is A. Gam, Bach, Dag. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in far. A, A. A, A. The next vowel sound is e, shell, ken, kehe. It's very similar to the e in the word education. E, 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 e. The next vowel sound is e, misim, imun, tinok. This is identical to the I in ski. E, 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 e. The next vowel sound is o. Shalom, Noar, Chalom. It's very similar to the O sound in the word or. O, 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 O. The last vowel sound for this lesson is U, Tmuna. Aduma, medura. This is identical to the U in the word rule. U, 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 U. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken. So don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Hebrew, there are only 22 letters of the alphabet, and technically they're all consonants. There are also vowel sounds which are shown by the dot system called nikud. Many of the sounds are similar to English, like b, v, sh, s, and t. B, v, sh, s. But there are a few sounds you may not recognize at first. Like ch, uh, tz. In Hebrew, words are stressed differently than in English. Stress is usually on the last syllable of the word. Avoda, mutzetz, mitlabesh. But in some cases, the stress is on the second to last syllable of the word. Lakoach, nosea, mitlabeshet. Letters produce consonant sounds. These sounds are combined with vowel sounds indicated by the nikud. Vowel sounds you find in Hebrew are all found in English as well. A, E, I, O, U. There are different notations for these vowels, but in most cases, the basic vowel sound stays the same. The pattern of the word and the placement of the vowel determines which vowel symbol will be used. For example, the word for language, lashon, and the word for crisis, mshber, 
both have a vowels after the first letter, but because of the way the word is constructed, the vowels are notated differently. Some letters have two sounds, depending on if there's a stress on the consonant or not. Bet is both b and v. Kaf is both k and ch. Pe is both p and f. There is also one other letter that changes sound according to the dot above it. That's shin and sin. It makes the sh sound when the dot is on the right, and the s sound when the dot is on the left. The most daunting group of letters are the guttural letters. A, h, ch, a, r. Three of these letters are pronounced deep in the throat. These may feel unusual at first, but are fun to say once you get the hang of them. Ein, chet, reish. Most of the sounds in Hebrew are already sounds you use in English. That means that if you were to simply imitate a Hebrew speaker, your pronunciation would be correct a lot of the time. For example, listen and repeat after eating. Rakevet. Rakevet. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The K, V, and T sounds are practically identical to English. It's only the R that's a little different. Focus on this first letter. It's often written as an R, but don't be fooled. This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. We've covered only the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out our ultimate guide to Hebrew pronunciation. In that video series, we teach you how to pronounce every single sound used in Hebrew. How can you possibly read Hebrew if it doesn't have any vowels? The simple answer to this question is that people who are fluent in Hebrew know which vowels go with different words. For someone who knows any language well, it's really not as hard as it sounds. Try it! Here's a famous quote in English translation, which the vowels removed. Take a minute to read this. Can you figure it out? That which is hateful to you do not do to your fellow. Was it easier than you thought? Most English speakers don't practice this skill much, but imagine if you did this all the time. In reality, there are a few characters used sometimes to indicate vowel sounds in Hebrew, and even native speakers use them. I'll explain more about this in a later lesson. You now know how native speakers can read Hebrew without vowels. But what about Hebrew learners? There are a couple systems available to help non-native or beginner speakers read Hebrew text. The most common of these is the Nikud. Here's an example. Do you see these dots and marks? They represent the vowel sounds and are called Nikud. We go over this system in more detail in our Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy series. But for now, take comfort that there is help. There is also a number of systems of Roman transliteration. These almost always include vowels to help you read. For example, the sentence above can be read Toch mispar shavuot, achanut misgera. All beginner materials at HebrewPod101.com include this kind of romanization. 10 hardest words to pronounce in Hebrew. So, let's begin. 
חצוצרה. טראמפט. חצוצרה. טראמפט. הייתי רוצה לנגן בחצוצרה. I would like to play the trumpet. לצחצח. To brush. חשוב מאוד לצחצח שיניים פעמיים ביום. It is very important to brush your teeth twice a day. צריכים. must, need. צריכים. must. צריכים is, is the word must, but in the plural masculine version of this word. הם צריכים. They must, they need. For example, הם צריכים לעזוב את המסיבה המוקדם. They must leave the party early. They must or they need to. Or they have to. חתיכה. Peace. חתיכה. Peace. I, it's not like it, they're, these are not tongue twisters, it's just, it's for people who can't pronounce ח. אפשר לקבל חתיכת עוגה בבקשה? Can I have a piece of cake, please? מנצנץ. Sparkly. I love this word. מנצנץ. Sparkling. Yeah, I, okay, I love this lesson. These are really fun words. It's fun to say. Try it. Come on. Nice. For example, השרשרת שלי מנצנצת. My necklace is sparkly. Uh, it's not really, but just, you know, use your imagination. פעלולים. Special effects. פעלולים. But it's more fun saying it fast. פעלולים. So usually like a stuntman will be called פעלולן. Now that I, 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 I'm saying it over and over again, I'm like, is this a real word? I'm not sure all of a sudden, but it is. Wow. מי היה אחראי על הפעלולים בסרט הזה? Wow. Who was in charge of the special effects in this movie? שפשוף. Rub. This is a noun. The verb will be לשפשף. אם נשפך לכם יין אדום על השטיח, תשפשפו אותו במלח. If you spilled red wine on your carpet, rub it with salt. Someone told me about this method, I did not uh, check it, so I don't really know. לצחקק, to giggle. לצחקק, to giggle. Oh, that's a wonderful word. To laugh is לצחוק. So this is like the smaller version of it, לצחקק. And the noun version is צחקוק. צחקוקים, yeah, in plural. הם לא הפסיקו לצחקק בזמן שדיברתי. They wouldn't stop giggling while I was talking. How rude. מחצלת. מעט. מחצלת. מעט. כשאתם הולכים לים, אל תשכחו לקחת מחצלת. When you go to the beach, don't forget to take a mat. שרוכים. שולייסס. שרוכים. שולייסס. באיזה גיל למדתם לקשור את השרוכים? What age did you learn to tie your own shoelaces? Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. כמה זה עולה? How much is it? כמה זה עולה? How much is it? Um, so the word עולה in Hebrew means cost, but it also means to go up. 
Um, so just notice. אתה מדבר אנגלית? Do you speak English? אתה מדבר אנגלית? Do you speak English? Well, obviously, if somebody speaks English, he can answer you that question even if you ask it in English. אני מניח, I guess so. אני מניח, I guess so. So, the literal translation of, like, the verb להניח, אני מניח, Um, it's like, it's assume. So, it's kind of like saying, instead of I guess so, it's like, I assume so. That's the literal translation. Ma shlomcha? How are you? Ma shlomcha? Or ma shlomech for a woman. And this is, how are you? How do you feel? Chadash. New. Yesh li tisporet chadasha. I got a new haircut. Avoda. Work. It's a work, it's also a job. יש לי עבודה חדשה. I have a new job. זה מוצא חן בעיניי. I like that one. זה מוצא חן בעיניי. I like that one. Um, so when we say מוצא חן, um, it's actually a very interesting phrase because it means that it finds grace in my eyes, uh, which I think is a beautiful way to say that you like something. אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu please? אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu please? Yeah, sometimes they just forget, like they sit, they sit you down, you're at the table, sometimes they'll even give you water and no menu, so that's kind of funny. אני לא מסכים. לא. I don't agree. No. אני לא מסכים. לא. I don't agree. No. So, when you say אני לא מסכים in Hebrew, it can either mean I don't agree or I won't allow it. Um, it depends to who you're talking to. Like, I would maybe say it to my dog and I'll tell him אני לא מסכימה and then he'll just stop doing what he's doing. Um, but if you're not agreeing with somebody's opinion, you can also say אני לא מסכים. Mm-mm, no. אני מסכים. I agree. אני מסכים. I agree. I don't know, I seem to use that much less than don't agree. Maybe, maybe it's just me. זה לא מתאים לי. This one isn't good for me. זה לא מתאים לי. This one isn't good for me. The word מתאים has a few meanings as well. It can mean match and it can mean to suit. Like it doesn't suit me. So if you have two things that are supposed to be the same but they're not, you can say that um, זה לא מתאים. It doesn't match. מים בבקשה. Water please. מים בבקשה. Water please. Yeah, water in restaurants. You should know that it, you're always supposed to get tap water for free, so remember that. Hayita be Israel? Have you been to Israel? Hayita be Israel? Have you been to Israel? For a female, Hayit be Israel? Well, have you? Efshar bevakasha la arroz le matana? Can you please wrap it as a gift? Efshar bevakasha le arroz le matana? Can you please wrap it as a gift? Uh, I used to work at a store that people used to buy a lot of gifts from, and that was like my favorite part, like to wrap it up. I don't, I don't know why. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. So out of all the things, this is the thing you want. And you should emphasize, when you say that, you should emphasize the word זה. It. This. אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? Now this one you should always say with a smile on your face. And another way of saying it in Hebrew, which is a little bit more common and a little bit more casual, is instead of, instead of the verb לתת, to give, you use the verb לעשות, to do. אתה יכול לעשות לי הנחה? 
אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit card? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit cards? Again, usually yes. Um, another very useful thing to ask with credit cards is if you can put like the tip in a restaurant, if you can put that on the credit card as well. And when you want to ask that, you'd say, אפשר טיפ באשראי? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? I feel like this sentence is more useful in places when you have like an underground train, uh, whereas in Israel you have like a train that goes between cities, but sometimes you need to take that to the airport, so it's good to ask. סליחה, כמה עולה נסיעה? Excuse me, what's the fare? סליחה, כמה עולה נסיעה? Excuse me, what's the fare? I guess you'd ask that probably only on a bus in Israel and not in any other place. אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? Yeah, so if you're not that much into selfies or you'd want to get a more panoramic or a wide view of what's behind you, then ask somebody, don't be shy. Can. Yes. You can use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo. No. I like this word. It has a fun sound, and it was my sister's first word. Lo. No. Bali. I feel like. Bali. It's two words. Bali. And it means I feel like I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. Lo bali lalechet lebet asefer. I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Die. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. When someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die. Stop it. Enough. Yeah. Kama <laughs> ze ole. How much is it? Kama ze ole. How much is it? How much does it cost? Meule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome, uh, it's meule. The masculine form is meule and the feminine is meula. Like, haofa'a uh, zot meula. This show is awesome. It's great. Ech haya tiyul? Haya meule. How was the trip? It was meule. Great. Awesome. Ten phrases to say when you're angry. Let's get started. Zeloin yancha. It's none of your business. Zeloin yancha. It's none of your business. Zeloin yancha. Zeloin yancha. It's none of your business. We all know when we're using that, right? I wouldn't say it to, like, people from work. Shtok. Shut up. Shtok. Shut up. Shtok. Shtok. means be quiet or you know it's not really shut up but it's like be quiet sometimes you can say to like friends like like be quiet for a second you can say like stokshnia like shut up for a minute but if you really want to be rude um which sometimes you do then you want to say stom tape stom tape not et hape because this is too polite stom tape means like shut your mouth shut your mouth Shut your mouth. This is what you want to know. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azovoti. Uh, most of these phrases are obviously quite short because you don't want to start a lecture when you're angry, right? You just want just to send a message. You just want to be loud and clear. Leave me alone. Azovoti. It can also be physically, like, you know, just like, don't touch me. Like, Azovoti. If somebody does touch you, which is wrong. Ata tzokhek alai? Are you kidding me? Ata tzokhek alai? Are you kidding me? Ata tzokhek alai? Um, yeah, it also means like, are you making fun of me kind of a thing? Uh, we usually say it when somebody is saying something that you really can't believe. 
it doesn't have to be like in an angry way. Like if somebody tells you something and it's really amazing, you say like, you're kidding, right? So you can say, It's like, no, no, it's real. <gasps> can be that kind of a thing. Sheye, whatever. Sheye, whatever. Sheye, it's like, let it be. <laughs> uh, but it's not let it be like in a philosophical kind of a Beatles. It's more like, it's whatever, I don't, I don't care. Oh yeah, you can, you can say to your parents, like, whatever, she yeah. Or if somebody tells you something and you don't really, like, you don't, you don't even want to argue about it anymore, it's just whatever, okay, just she yeah. She yeah. She yeah. It's more of a teenager thing. Maspik im ze. Cut it out. Maspik im ze. Cut it out. Now this is more of a parent thing, like when you twitch your leg or you're just making noise or, you know, children are being um, annoying. Uh, and you just, you also kind of say it through your teeth, it's like, maspik im ze. And the slower you say it, the scarier it is. It's like, the slower it is, you know they mean business. Oh my god, I should really stop. Sorry, mom. It's more of like a stop, kind of a, you know, enough. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I mean, if when you're having an argument or something and you just, you know, want to give the silent treatment and somebody tries to, somebody tries to ruin your silent treatment, then you're just like, I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. Talk to the hand. אני כועס. I'm upset. אני כועס. I'm upset. I guess it's not too scary. I mean, people are entitled to their emotions, right? So you can say, you can express in simple words that you're upset or angry. That's perfectly fine. It's what comes after that. <laughs> it's really the bad part, right? It's like, אני כועס. I'm angry. What about? אז מה? So what? אז מה? So what? This is a very Israeli kind of a gesture. And it's like, kind of like, who do you think you are? Kind of a thing. Or, you know, who cares? So what? Practice. It's like, it's like screwing a ball, but more like vertical and fast. אז מה is literally just, so what? אז מה? תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. I honestly believe that you can have a serious discussion or um, just a really angry discussion without um, using any cuss words, and I'm a strong believer in that, and I try not to because I think I can make my points perfectly clear without it. Um, and if somebody, like especially your child, if somebody is using, using like cuss words against you, you can say like, watch your mouth. And that's a really scary thing to, thing to say, in my opinion, to somebody like, תשמור על הפה שלך. Because there is a famous saying in Hebrew that means that life and death is on the tongue, like you can control life and death just by speaking. And it says, in Hebrew it says, חיים ומוות ביד הלשון. So if somebody tells you to watch your mouth, it means like, oh, this is going to get serious. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. 10 pickup lines to use at your own risk. Let's start. Hey, Motek. Hey, babe. Hi, Motek. Hey, babe. Ani lo Motek shelcha. I'm not your babe. That's how I would reply. Yeah. Not everybody would reply like that, but... I don't know how often people would say that to somebody they wouldn't know. Um, I guess m somebody's boyfriend could say it, that would be okay. Or like, my mom could say it to me because motek doesn't have to be babe, it can also be like, sweetie. Um, but if like somebody I didn't know say that to me, I would like, yeah, no, mm-mm. איבדתי את מספר הטלפון שלי. אפשר אולי את שלך? 
I lost my telephone number. Could you lend me yours? איבדתי את מספר הטלפון שלי. אפשר אולי את שלך? I lost my telephone number. Could you lend me yours? I think if somebody would say that to me, like... As a joke, then I would probably laugh and it will be like a good icebreaker, but if you do it like kind of seriously, then I mean no, but it is it is funny, I guess, yeah, <laughs> it's just so cheesy, okay, the next one is like the super duper Israeli pickup line, so are you ready for this? Abba Shelach Ganan is your father a gardener? אבא שלך גנן? You'll have to edit this out, what you're doing? <laughs> is your father a gardener? Now I know, I know this is very weird, but the next, like the, the next line that you would say is, if, like, is your father a gardener? Because if not, then how did he have such a flower? Like you are the flower. Right, so the full sentence in Hebrew um, would be Abba Shalach Ganan Az ech yatsalo kaze perach Don't ever use it. This <laughs> is horrible. This is horrible. I know, right? Yeah. Like you're, you're a flower. Az, ata ba lepo arbe? So, you come here often? Az, ata ba lepo arbe? So, you come here often? Very common. Sometimes people will say it like casually like, oh, I'm not picking up on you. I'm just, you know, making conversation. No, it's, they're not making conversation. They just, yeah. You are the most beautiful girl I ever saw. You are the most beautiful girl I ever saw. How could that even be possible? It's, I mean, no. Nitarev al neshika shabasof atipardimi meni? Should we bet a kiss that you will dump me? Nitarev al neshika shabasof atipardimi meni? Shall we bet a kiss that you will dump me? This is, this is very borderline here. I'm... I don't support this one specifically, even though, I mean, it is a little bit funny, but don't use it. אתה מאמין באהבה ממבט ראשון, או שעלי לחזור שוב? Do you believe in love at first sight, or should I pass by one more time? אתה מאמין באהבה ממבט ראשון, או שעלי לחזור שוב? Do you believe in love at first sight, or should I pass by one more time? This is extremely corny, but again, I think it's hilarious and it's very cute and funny, so... I guess if somebody uses it, like, as a joke, it's cute. Because it's so corny that it's cute, you know? Yeah. תרצי משהו? משקה? מתאבן? אותי? Would you like something? A drink? An appetizer? Me? תרצי משהו? משקה? מתאבן? אותי? Would you like something? A drink? An appetizer? Me? Don't put yourself in the same, you know, in the same level as a drink or an appetizer. It's, it doesn't... No, it's not, it's not, doesn't, it's not a compliment for you. Don't, don't do that, guys. Or girls. אני כבר כאן. מה הן שתי המשאלות האחרות שלך? There, I'm already here. What are your other two wishes? אני כבר כאן. מה הן שתי המשאלות האחרות שלך? There, I'm already here. What are your other two wishes? This is kind of creative, I guess. האם מתתי או שמלאכים ירדו מגן עדן? Am I dead or have the angels fallen from the sky? האם מתתי או שמלאכים ירדו מגן עדן? Am I dead or have the angels fallen from the sky? No comment. 
Okay, everybody, that's it. You've braved through it. Those were 10 pickup lines to use at your own risk. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any more creative ones. Top 10 most common vocabulary for tourists. Let's start. Cartis. Ticket. Cartis. Ticket. Kne et ha cartis batachana. Terem ha alia la rakevet. Get your ticket at the station before boarding the train. I think that some places, like if you're really in a rush, you can um, buy your ticket on the train, but I wouldn't try. I wouldn't try doing it. Tayar. Tourist. Tayar. Tourist. Macha tagia la malon. Kvutsa gdola shel tayarim. Tomorrow, a large group of tourists will arrive at the hotel. Luach zmanim. Itinerary. Luach zmanim. Itinerary. Ze luach hazmanim lehayom. This is today's itinerary. The word luach zmanim can also mean a uh, schedule, not just itinerary. It's kind of the same. Madrich tiulim. Guidebook. Madrich tiulim. A guidebook. Madrich tiulim. Iten meida mo'il la tiul shalcha. A guidebook will give you helpful information for your trip. The word in Hebrew, madrich tiulim, it's not just a guidebook, but it can also mean like a person who is a tour guide or any other type of guide. Autobus tiulim. Tour bus. Autobus tiulim. A tour bus. Autobus tiulim hu metsuyan letiul kvutsati. A tour bus is a great way to take a group trip. I think people take group trips less and less, right? Am I wrong? I think now with the internet and mobile phones and stuff like that, people can get around on their own much more than they could before. So they don't really need that group thing so much anymore. They can just do it by themselves, and I think that's great. Um, but group trips are also very good for maybe older people or families, but yeah. Mikdash. Temple. Mikdash. Temple. Harbe anashim holchim la mikdash kedei lehit palel. Many people go to the temple for prayer. Um, this one, the meaning of the word mikdash, it's any temple that's not Jewish. I know sometimes in the U.S. people use the word temple also for a synagogue, but this time it's not the same. Misgad. Mosque. Misgad. Mosque. Ba misgad, ha muslimim mitpalalim kol yom. At a mosque, Muslims pray every day. Um, there are many mosques in Israel. Some of them are absolutely beautiful, and I totally recommend it to visit. Knesia. Church. Knesia. Church. Leharbe nutsrim, chashuv levaker ba knesia. Kol yom rishon. Many Christians feel it is important to attend church every Sunday. Um, also, many churches in Israel as well. Very beautiful. Maybe not as beautiful as those you see in Europe, but very interesting and historical. Mapal. Waterfall. Mapal. Waterfall. Hamapal yefe. The waterfall is beautiful. Le sayer. To tour. Le sayer. To tour. Machar netze le sayer ba'ir ha'atika. Tomorrow we'll go tour the old city. So the word le sayer, it's just like for traveling when you're a tourist. It's not really just a word that you casually use on your everyday. Top 10 most popular train or bus stations in Israel. Let's start. Hatachana HaMerkazit Yerushalayim Jerusalem Central Station Tamid Lachutz Batachana HaMerkazit BeYerushalayim It's always busy at Jerusalem Central Station. Luckily, I have never been. Sde HaTeufa Ben Gurion Ben Gurion Airport Sde HaTeufa Ben Gurion 
הוא הגדול והחשוב בישראל. בן גוריון איירפורט is the largest main airport in Israel. It is also named after the first prime minister of Israel, David Ben Gurion. So, Ben Gurion Airport is supposedly in Tel Aviv, but it's not really, it's close, and it's in a city called Lod. Ha-Universita. University. Ha-Studentim yirdu b'tachanat ha-Universita. The students got off at the university station. Uh, that's a very important story. train station in Tel Aviv, and one that was actually the closest to my house. So it is called the University Station because it's just right next to Tel Aviv University. Um, so it makes, makes it convenient for students from all over the country to get there. Ha'ir Ha'atika, Old City. Anashim mikol hadatot mitgorerim ba'ir Ha'atika. People from all religions live in the old city. When we say the old city, we mean the old city of Jerusalem, which is right down in the center of um, Jerusalem metropolitan, I guess, today. Um, that's the old city that existed for thousands of years. Shuk Machne Yehuda, Mahane Yehuda Market. Shuk Machne Yehuda, הוא כמו שני מקומות שונים במשך היום והלילה. Mahne Yehuda Market is like two different places during the day and during the night. It's actually very true. Like during the day, it's just a market um, with, uh, you know, people selling vegetables and fish and meat and whatever. And at nighttime, there are many nice restaurants there and bars and a lot of young people hang out. So it's not just for like old grannies to go shopping for vegetables for soup, but it's also like a very hip kind of an area for young people to hang out. It's kind of cool. Rakevet Savidor Merkaz. Savidor Railway Station. Anachnu tzrichim l'achlif rakevet b'savidor merkaz. We need to change trains at Savidor Merkaz Station. So yes, usually this is the station when you usually have to change trains when you're going from the north part of Israel to the south. Um, it will happen in Tel Aviv, which is the center, and that will be the station that you will change it in. Merkazit Chofa Carmel. Carmel Beach Central Bus Station. Af pam lo haiti batachana merkazit Chofa Carmel. I have never been to Carmel Beach Central Bus Station. I actually have many, many times. Uh, my boyfriend used to live a long, long, long time ago. I had a boyfriend in Haifa, and I used to go there all the time. Hashalom, Azrieli. Hashalom, Azrieli. Achar ha-tzahrayim yesh hamon chayalim be-ezor Hashalom Azrieli. In the afternoons, there are a lot of soldiers around Hashalom Azrieli area. This is again a very big uh, train station in Tel Aviv, and it's right next to a big shopping mall called Azrieli. And that shopping mall is very close to a military base. Tachanat HaRakevet Beit Yehoshua Beit Yehoshua train station אני תמיד עולה בתחנת הרכבת בית יהושע. I always take the train from בית יהושע. I have to admit I don't know where that is. I think it's up north. I don't know. שער יפו, ג'פה גייט. שבוע שעבר הלכנו לאכול חומוס במסעדה ליד שער יפו. Last week we ate hummus at a restaurant near Jaffa Gate. I like hummus. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Let's get started. Tik gov, backpack. I carry everything in my backpack. Ani sama ha kol betika gav shili. I put everything in my backpack. Um, it's actually really true. You know how some 
people like change up their bags and you know they have one for this and one for that and I just have like one <laughs> that I carry around and it's kind of heavy and has everything but what can you do it's just it's easier like that Talmid Student בתיכון הייתי תלמיד ממוצע In high school I was an average student No, I wasn't. I was a very good student every time. And also, um, in Hebrew, the word for a student in school and for a student in the university is different. We say talmid for school, and for university we say student. שיעורי בית Homework יש לנו שיעורי בית באנגלית. We have homework in English. Literal translation of שיעורי בית is house classes or house studying. So even though... Nobody's teaching you, it's still considered like a class and not a task. בחינה Exam מתי מתקיימת הבחינה הסופית שלך? When is your final exam taking place? Yeah, do you guys like exams and tests? I was kind of okay with it. Um, I don't know, it's just that all of this studying finally leads to something and then you finish it and you feel so relieved and you just know like, okay, this is done, accomplished. מחברת Notebook יש לי מחברת נפרדת לכל שיעור. I have a separate notebook for each class. I used to have like this notebook binder when I was in first grade. I didn't have like those big spiral notebooks that people have when they're older. I had like the small ones that are, you know, just clipped together. And there were all sorts of like colors and all sorts of characters. And I put all of my notebooks in a binder that had like a Barbie on it. בית ספר School לוקח לי חמש דקות להגיע לבית הספר It takes me five minutes to get to school Literal translation of the combination בית ספר actually means book house <laughs> And it's not a library, it's a school There's a different name for a library בית ספר is like where you open a book and learn <laughs> Yeah <laughs> ללמוד To study אתם נהנים ללמוד עברית? Do you enjoy studying Hebrew? Of course you are! <laughs> in Hebrew, the word lilmod means study and learn. It's used for both. I know in English it's also sometimes the same thing. But studying, I guess, is more proactive and learning it's more passive. But in Hebrew, it's the same word for both. It's the first day of class. Do you like the first day of class? School all through the years, like from, from elementary school to like high school, I really liked it because I enjoyed seeing my friends again and stuff like that. But in university, like it was really bad. <laughs> Why? We're in the same class. Every year, you would, Israel at least, you would only discover like who are your classmates, I think only on the first day. And if you had like your best buddy, it's like, we're in the same class. And then you would sit together on the same table. And it's just mm, ah, exciting. What classes are you taking? Like, you don't really have choice when you're in high school. It's like, oh, what are you taking? It's whatever, whatever they tell me to do. In university, you choose your own classes, and then you can ask, like, oh, are you taking this? Are you taking this? This is really bad. I did last year. It's really boring. Blah, blah, blah. Top 10 words to know before taking the airplane. Let's begin. Ta hatayas. Pilot chamber. Ta hatayas. Pilot chamber. Ein lehikanes le ta hatayas. There is no entrance to the pilot chamber. Ta in Hebrew can also mean cell. It can also mean a cell like for a cellular phone. It can mean a cell in a human body or a biological um, organism. Um, and it can also mean a chamber. Chagorat betichut. Seatbelt. Chagorat betichut. Seatbelt. Anna had ku et chagorat habetichut. Please fasten your seat belt. So, in English we say seat belt, but in Hebrew, chagorat betichut means more like a um, safety belt than a seat belt. Hefreshei zmanim. Time difference. Hefreshei zmanim. Time difference. Hefresh hazmanim bein Israel veArtzot Abrit. The time difference between Israel and the U.S. is about seven hours. Oof, time differences, this is rough. Um, 
I use um, melatonin to help me get over jet lag. What do you guys do? Let me know. Ta'e ichsun ilaim. Overhead storage compartments. Ta'e ichsun ilaim. Overhead storage compartments. Yesh levade sheta'e ichsun ha'ilaim sgurim kahalacha. Please make sure that the overhead storage compartments are closed properly. Ilaim means overhead, but it can also mean something that is superior. So don't think that those storage compartments are all that. It's just that they're overhead. Uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. Yetsiat Khirum. Emergency exit. Yetsiat Khirum. Emergency exit. Hakisaot hachitovim. Nimtsaim leyad yetsiat hachirum. The best seats are next to the emergency exits. Now they charge extra for those. They didn't used to, like, think until a few years ago, but now they do, so I don't think that's... doesn't worth it. Moshav. Seat. Moshav. Seat. Slicha. Yesh be'aya im ha-moshav sheli. Excuse me, there's a problem with my seat. The Hebrew word moshav, that means seat, um, obviously is connected to the word for sitting down, which is lashevet. Lashevet, moshav. Dayal, flight attendant. Dayal, flight attendant. Harbe anashim cholmim lavod kedayalim. Many people dream of working as flight attendants. Do they? I don't know. Anyway, uh, the word for a male flight attendant is dayal, and a female is dayelet. Tayas, pilot. Tayas, pilot. La tayas, achrayut gdola beyoter. Lamrot hamichshuv. The pilot has a big responsibility, in spite of autopilot. And a female, the female for tayas is Tayaset. There are many of those as well. Machlaka Rishona. First class. Machlaka Rishona. First class. Meolam lo yatsali latus be machlaka Rishona. I've never flown first class. Yeah, Sunday. Machleket Tayarim. Economy class. Machleket Tayarim. Economy class. Tisa b'machleket tayarim hi b'derech klal hazola b'yoter. A flight in the economy class is usually the cheapest one. So um, another way of saying machleket tayarim is machleket nusim. In this video, you'll learn three reasons you're never too old to learn a language, and you'll also learn three ways our learning system can help people of all ages to study efficiently. Number one, seniors have better focus. Learning a new language in your 50s or 60s may actually be easier than learning as a teenager or young adult. More mature adults can better focus on the details necessary to master a new language. Older people are also often more dedicated to their goals and put more work into achieving them. Seniors are better able to focus on completing lessons and reaching goals. There are a lot of distractions out there these days for young people. There's everything from Facebook to Instagram and all the usual drama of daily life at work and at school. Seniors are typically less concerned with these kinds of things and are better at focusing on tasks until completion. This is extremely important for language study, where regular practice and attention to detail are key. Not only are you never too old to learn, you may have some advantages over younger learners. Our language learning program has a number of special tools to make learning a new language in your 50s or 60s easy. You'll use the same resources as a tech-savvy teenager. Number two, learning is vital to healthy and happy living. Learning is actually vital to your health. Doing things like playing word games, doing puzzles, and even using online platforms like Luminosity do help keep the mind nimble. But nothing compares to learning a second language in terms of health benefits for your mind. Learning another language may be one of the very best retirement hobbies you can pick up. You can also apply your second language knowledge when you travel. Number three, there are health benefits to learning new things after the age of 60. 
Learning a second language increases the number of neural pathways in the brain. Forging these new neural pathways helps you code and sort the new language you are learning. In addition, there are other brain health benefits associated with learning a new language. Here's a list of benefits bilingual people can enjoy. Higher overall general intelligence. Better memory and memorization skills. Better perception of surroundings. Better focus, concentration, and attention to detail. So in a very real way, learning a new language is one of the best and most practical retirement hobbies you can find because it helps protect against cognitive decline as you age. Now let's talk about how our language learning program has methods to make sure you can start learning in your 50s, 60s, and beyond. Number one, we have an intuitive, easy to use system. Learning in old age doesn't have to be hard or irritating. It can and should be fun. From your very first lesson, we'll make sure you're speaking fluently every day. You can start and stop each lesson as many times as you want. Study when you want, where you want, and at the pace you decide. Number two, you'll find special tools to boost retention and performance. As we mature, learning to use the right tools is vital to getting jobs done fast and right. So we make it easier than ever to make learning in old age fun and rewarding with a wide range of tools to boost retention and performance, including spaced repetition flashcards, so you can learn vocab fast, line-by-line -line audio transcripts, so you can read along with each lesson, pronunciation and accent review, instructor lesson notes, review quizzes, 2000 core words, enough for fluency, you are truly never too old to learn with more than 20 tools and resources to help boost learning and performance. Number three, you'll get support every step of the way. Although you may never be too old to learn, it doesn't hurt to have a little help along the way. Our language learning system has helped thousands of seniors learn and master a new language with help and support at every step. We offer 24 seven assistance. Just send us an email. We have dedicated language experts standing by to help you with any problem or issue you may be experiencing. There is also instructor feedback. Have specific questions about a lesson or your progress? You can directly email instructors and get direct responses to any question you may have about your studies or lessons. Or try studying with your very own instructor. Members of our exclusive Premium Plus plan not only get a custom curriculum tailored to their very own goals, they also gain access to their very own language instructor. Learning in old age isn't just a luxury. It's crucial to helping avoid the onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and other age-related cognitive issues. Specifically, learning another language helps increase overall intelligence and improve awareness, memory, and overall cognitive function. So not only are you never too old to learn a new language for health reasons, it's a great way to meet new people and start adventures. Want to cut your language studying time in half? In this video, you'll discover how learning a language using PDF lessons is convenient, efficient, and can help you cut your studying time nearly in half. Many people give up on their dream of learning a second language because traditional classroom instruction is too much of a hassle. Between getting to class, studying on someone else's schedule, and just the sheer expense of the books and tuition, traditional learning can be tough. Many people simply give up. Online classes are an option, but sometimes limited data plans can derail the dream of learning a new language. Fortunately, there is a solution, learning language using PDF lesson notes. Let's take a closer look at how studying language lessons in PDF format can help you reach your dream in about half the time of normal video or audio lessons. First, print all lessons and PDF tools and take them with you anywhere. Sometimes a tiny smartphone screen just isn't adequate, especially when you're trying to learn something new. The great thing about PDF lessons is that they can be quickly printed and taken anywhere after you download them. In fact, printing out lessons in PDF format can actually save you time when compared to going through the material on a smartphone with a small screen even with the extra printing time. Second, they're a great study tool to boost retention and mastery. Studying video or audio lessons online is a great way to learn a language because students can play and rewind sections as many times as needed until the lesson is mastered. But when you review the same lessons again in PDF format, an incredible thing happens. Your retention dramatically improves. 
Thanks to time-spaced repetition, seeing the information again in written format helps reinforce the information in your mind and improves both retention and recall. The benefits of learning a language using PDF lessons quickly add up to significant time savings for you, your data plan, and your dream of learning a new language. Third, all lessons in PDF format include in-depth instructor notes. We have thousands of HD video and audio lessons, and each one includes a PDF version with a line-by-line -line transcript, so you can read along with the lesson as it appears online. In addition to the line-by-line -line transcript, all lessons include in-depth instructor notes with more information, sample sentences, explanations, and translations. The additional information and notes help you learn faster and with greater mastery than using the video or audio lessons alone. And when paired with language learning video games, video and audio lessons, or other study aids, our PDF lessons help you reach your dream of learning a new language faster and easier than many traditional classroom settings. Fourth, you can download the world's largest online collection of lessons by real instructors. Planning on going on vacation and don't know if you'll have reliable internet service? If you're learning through PDF lessons, it's not a problem. Once you download lessons in PDF format to your smartphone, PC, or favorite media device, they are yours to use and keep forever. Once downloaded, you can either print out or access your lessons in PDF format, regardless of internet access. When you consistently learn through PDF lessons, the time savings and benefits quickly compound. From quicker access to faster learning, PDF lessons can potentially reduce total study time required to learn a concept. Our PDF lessons include instructor notes and supplemental resources that help you learn faster and with less effort. Does having a study partner help you learn a language faster? For most people, having a friend or romantic partner who is a native speaker of their target language dramatically improves their ability to master the language. In this video, we'll talk about some ways to help you build relationships with people. We'll also talk about three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. 
If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You wanna speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step-by-step step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. And today, you're going to learn 1. How to approach your goals 2. How to find time to learn a language and 3. Why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. So. If you've ever spent time in the gym, you'll quickly see how similar training and language learning are. But before we move on, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, want to perfect your pronunciation? Then get our new pronunciation PDF cheat sheet right now. You'll learn how to sound like a native speaker and how to practice your pronunciation. Second, do you know the seven tested ways to learn language fast? With this new ebook, you'll learn how to use our learning system to speak better, remember more words, and improve fast. Download it for free right now. Third, 20 useful phrases for a hair salon. Would you be able to get a haircut in your target language? If you said no, then this one minute lesson is just what you need. Fourth, 20 phrases for doing business successfully. If you're learning the language for work, this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn the 20 most common greetings, phrases, and questions for business meetings. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. The first lesson is how to approach your goals and language learning. So why are we talking about the gym? The gym is a great example because it's filled with people working on their goals, and it gives you a snapshot of where most people are with their goals. And everyone there has one goal, to be fit. But not everyone is there yet. You have a few people that look like fitness models. Then you have around 20 or 30 people that have good, respectable physiques, the middle group. And then the rest of the people are still working their way up. It's motivating because everyone has a chance of succeeding. If you've been to the gym, you understand the importance of repetition. 
Doing reps. A rep is the number of times you do a certain exercise. Like 15 push-ups is 15 reps of push-ups. So even people still working toward their goals have a chance of succeeding if they put in the reps. If they do a little bit a day over a long period of time, they'll get there. The process is simple. The more you do, the longer you stick with it, the more progress you make. And the same goes for learning language or any other goal in life. It's about putting in the reps a little bit a day, consistently, for a long period of time. If you want to get bigger muscles, you pick up a dumbbell and you do reps. If you want to learn more words, you do the reps. Five new words a day. So, what can you do right now? For example, if you're using our program, just do one lesson a day. If you have a textbook, do one page a day. If you're using an app, put in five minutes a day. Again, everyone has a chance to succeed. They just need to put in the reps and they need to make the time. This is where the second lesson comes in. You'll learn how to find and make time to learn a language. There's a reason the people you see at the gym daily, and especially the people you see at 10 p.m. on a Friday, are the ones with above average results. They're the most consistent. But how do they get that level of consistency? There tend to be three types of people. First, the people that have plenty of free time, so it's a non-issue for them. Second, the busier people. They make time regardless of what their schedule is like, meaning they show up at 1 a.m. just to fit in a session, or they cancel other plans to make time. And third, the people who have made it a habit. They're so used to going that they don't have to think about it. Ideally, you want to be in the third group with language learning, but most people fall into the second group. The truth is that to make time, they have to cancel other plans. Some wake up earlier to squeeze in a session in the AM. Some go late at night. It's the same exact thing with language learning. You make time. The good news with language learning is you don't need to open up a lesson at 1 AM and put in an hour. With our learning program, you'll get our quick but powerful three to 15 minute audio and video lessons. And because the lessons are short, you can easily make time. You can do a lesson on your commute or while walking somewhere. Imagine learning a quick conversation while on your way to the store. Finally, the third language learning lesson you'll learn at the gym is why you don't need the best possible routine to get results. Have you ever heard a friend say, I have to start the right way. It has to be perfect. Well, this is a disastrous way to start anything, whether fitness or language learning. And most learners spend a lot of time worrying about starting right instead of just starting and keeping at it. But the point is, if you start learning from a textbook and stick with it, you'll get results. You'll improve your reading, vocabulary, and grammar. Of course, it won't get you speaking. You'll only get good at what you focus on. But the fact is, you'll still make progress. Same with the gym. If you start off with bicep curls, you'll see progress in time. But at some point, you'll need to add in legs as well. You can't skip leg day. So here's what you can learn. Here's what smart beginners do. They don't look for the best way to start, they just start and keep going. And once they have a consistent routine, they start optimizing, they improve their routine. If you start taking one lesson a day and can easily maintain that routine, then you might eventually realize that you want to practice speaking. You need to shadow that lesson's conversation. So you add shadowing to your routine, and that's how you grow. Same thing with the gym. The smart beginners make sure they do their reps and come in as much as possible. And doing the basics is enough for them to build muscle. Later on, they'll start adjusting their exercises and adding new ones. But you'll never get to that point if you overthink yourself into inaction and don't build that habit. So as long as you start and continue, most starting routines and learning methods are good enough. You don't need the best possible one right now. You could have the best possible language learning program, but if you don't use it consistently, it's useless. All right, so today you learned, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the free lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to speak more of your target language, talking points for language learners. 
And today, you're going to learn one, what talking points are, two, five talking points you can use to start conversations and maximize your speaking time, and three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets so you can speak even more of your target language. And you'll find out how to get them for free. If you've always wanted to speak more in your target language, then this episode is for you. I'll get into this in just a bit. If you're like most language learners, then your number one goal is to speak more, right? You want to have fluent conversations with natives. It's a great goal to have. But for most language learners, speaking also happens to be their weakest skill. You may not know enough of the language to express yourself. You tend to run out of words and things to say. And you're just not sure how to start conversation. If you have at least one of these issues, then talking points are just what you need. Part one, what's a talking point? A talking point is a topic that invites discussion or argument. In other words, just something to talk about. It could be about yourself, your work, your hobbies, the weather, food, or what you did this past weekend. All of these are talking points. Here's an example to help you better understand talking points. Think of a conversation you'd have with a friend. You can ask, what did you do this weekend? They'll reply and then ask you back. The talking point here is the weekend. Let's say your friend says they went to a restaurant. That's a natural talking point to explore next. You can ask, what kind of restaurants do you like? Now you've covered two talking points. The more talking points you have, the more you can speak. And the same goes for your target language. The only challenge is you need to know the relevant words and phrases for that topic. For example, if you wanna talk about the weekend, you need to know phrases and questions like, what did you do this weekend? I did this. What about you? In the next part, you'll discover five easy talking points that you can master with our learning program. Let's get into part two. Part two, five talking points you can use. The first one is learn how to introduce yourself in your target language. Why is this a powerful talking point? Introducing yourself is something you'll do again and again every time you meet someone new. So learning the relevant phrases is a must. If you've done the first few lessons on our site, you can already do this. If not, then check out our absolute beginner lessons and the top 25 questions you must know lessons. You'll learn basic conversations with our quick three to 15 minute lessons. We'll give you the exact lines to use along with the translations so that you can use them in conversations. You can also use this talking point to continue a conversation. For example, if you've started with a different point like the weather, then it makes sense to say, by the way, my name is... Talking point number two, the weather. This is a universal talking point. People like to talk or complain about the weather all over the world. In fact, just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation with a native speaker. If you want to talk about the weather, check out our can-do lesson pathway called Can Talk About Weather. You'll find this pathway in the absolute beginner level of our lesson library. Talking point number three, compliments. Compliments are another great way to start a conversation or continue one. If you're running out of things to say, you can quickly transition and say something about their city, their country, or just, hey, I like your shirt. If you want to learn how to compliment, check out our compliments phrase list. This list is free to access for all users. If you don't know where to find it on our site, leave a comment in the comments below and we'll follow up. Point number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions or about the price and let the conversation go from there. These are very basic phrases that you learn in our survival phrases lessons. If you wanna strike up a quick dialogue, this is a great talking point to use. Point number five, learn phrases for transactions, like getting a room at a hotel, shopping, ordering food, or telling the taxi driver where to go. You may think that this isn't much of a talking point, but for the learners that are shy about talking to random native speakers for no reason, this is an easy way to start a dialogue. You have a good excuse. You wanna buy something so the staff will be happy to respond. Again, you learn all of these with our survival phrases lessons. Okay, let's move on to our last part. Part three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets. Lastly, I'm going to tell you how to get our collection of conversation cheat sheets for free. With these cheat sheets, you'll be able to talk about all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, dating, family, weather, and much more, which means you can master a lot of talking points and speak more of your target language. If you'd like to get these cheat sheets, please leave us a comment in the comment section. 
So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to double your speaking time in your target language. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye! Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.